One weapon was treated the absolute worst in Splatoon's history. If we were to go back a few years to Splatoon 2, that answer would probably be the Range Blaster, a weapon that was over-nerfed, hurt by the game's design, and then basically ignored for the rest of its life. It was a pretty good candidate, and I didn't think it would be possible to stoop lower than that. Then Brella got added to Splatoon 3, which is something I've already talked about before, but honestly, after thinking about it, I don't even think that's the worst one. I can play Brella's or even Range in Splatoon 2 and see see glimpses of what the weapon is supposed to be like, but there's one weapon in the game that's so far away from what it's supposed to be that I've called it the saddest weapon in the game, the Dynamo Roller. Today, let's talk how this weapon went from one of the best weapons in the game to an absolute mess that is in need of major buffs in order to compensate for what's been done to it over the years. Let's take a look at the full story. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoy, and let's take a trip back to Splatoon 1 when this thing was actually good. When Splatoon 1 started, started Dynamo Roller was really overtuned, and I mean, that's nothing special all rollers wore. At one point, their entire flick was a one-shot kill. Don't really know what the devs were doing with that one, but hey, the game was like brand new, so whatever. Even when it got rebalanced out, though, Dynamo ended up being a good weapon for pretty much the entirety of Splatoon 1's lifespan. While it did have some flaws, mainly its speed being a very slow weapon with a lot of wind-up and high ink consumption and whiting frames, meaning you would have to spend a lot of time recovering ink only to be up for a little bit before it had to go back to recovering its ink tank. This meant that the weapon was very predictable, linear, and only had a little bit of time where it was affecting things on the stage, giving plenty of opportunities for other players to work around it, which means it had to have a lot of strengths to be able to compensate for it. In this case, it had a few. Its painting capability was definitely the main thing. In Splatoon 1, Dynamo Rollers painted around 40 points per flick, which is a ridiculous amount. And that amount of paint happening all at once was amazing for flipping zones, covering areas quickly, and establishing map control for teams. And due to Dynamo's unique flicking arc, they were able to do this under ledges or behind forms of cover that would make them very difficult to contest for many shorter range weapons, especially those without the ability to have area of effect or bombs to deal with weapons behind walls. It also had really solid range, so it was painting pretty far away and wouldn't interfere too much with the rest of the weapons in its team. That alone wouldn't be enough though. The damage is definitely what made it more threatening. Its one-shot hitbox was pretty reasonably large and had quite a bit of range, being just a little bit more than most short range shooters in that game. Meaning if it was spaced properly and got the jump on an enemy, it had a big advantage in fights and was very capable of dealing with isolated targets. Meaning if you wanted to take out this weapon, it would be much better to do it with the group or you had to have the upper hand on the weapon first. For larger team fights though, it offered quite a bit of damage with its big hitbox, which would be very threatening and make it quite easy for many other weapons to combo off the weapon. Especially for area of effect like buckets, blasters, or burst bombs and shorter range faster weapons like shooters in that game. Basically, Dynamo's flicks had to be respected and even if they weren't up all the time, a good dynamo player would be pressuring effective areas in places that were really difficult to deal with them. It could control the pacing of the game quite well, was constantly threatening, and something teams would have to play around in order to deal with it. And on top of it, it had a very solid kit. While dynamo had two other solid kits with the gold and tempered that saw some use, the main one was the vanilla kit. Sprinkler helped with its overall paint output, especially since in Splatoon 1 it didn't deteriorate, meaning if you could put it up at a good location, it would stay there quite effectively. This was most commonly placed near a zone or or choke point that forced enemies to have to deal with the sprinkler or be painted over, keeping the dynamo's niche intact. The special weapon of Echo Locator, while nothing amazing in that game, was still pretty strong. Locating everyone on the opposite team was great, but the main utility for dynamo was its instant ink tank refill. Since downtime, having to recover your ink was one of the main weaknesses of that weapon, having a special that could instantly get your ink tank back, especially when it's responsible for holding a zone, was incredibly useful for the weapon. So that basically established dynamo as one of Splatoon 1's top tiers, a very unique weapon with a solid roll. And then Splatoon 2 just kind of murdered it, like it did with most of the Splatoon 1 top tiers. Now, I don't want to talk about Splatoon 2 for too long, because pretty much everything applies to Splatoon 3, but let me go over the main things that change with this weapon. While its ink consumption got slightly better, its roll dealt less damage for some reason, but mainly it had less range on its flicks, and its painting became much more inconsistent, which I'll talk about later, with it generally being way lower in this game. It might not sound like too much, but those were basically its two main things, and now didn't deal damage very well or paint very well. And while it got some amount of buffs that helped with these issues, it definitely wasn't enough. To be fair, it was kind of doomed being in Splatoon 2 anyway, a game with armor to mitigate one shots like this weapon has and missiles to punish slow weapons, on top of just Stingray into Dynamo being just an absolute monster. The only real super notable thing is Kensa Dynamo is basically an upgrade on its Splatoon 1 kit, since while it can give you an ink tank refill, it can also act as an entry tool, panic button, and another thing that can paint 
Dragon's Zone on your way in. Regardless, moving into Splatoon 3, the weapon's in pretty much the same spot as it was toward the end of Splatoon 2, and it's ended up feeling a lot worse, so let's talk about it. This thing is supposed to be a painting weapon, and sometimes it paints pretty decently. Not as good as Splatoon 1, but we'll take it, but other times it does this, and that is unacceptable. Yeah, there's other examples of this, like Range Blaster, for example, is bad jump RNG, but at least indirects aren't that unreliable, and you can try to set up situations in which you're grounded and are going for a shot. You kind of know what to expect when you're jumping. With Dynamo, your main job is painting, and there is no way around this. Sometimes it just doesn't do its job well, and that can screw you over hard. Its damage is also still really pathetic. I touched on it a little bit, but some short-range shooters outrange Dynamo's horizontal one-shot, which is a super slow flick with a very small hitbox. Speed has become more important, and especially as the games have gone on, has been something that hurts Dynamo. Yeah, it has Squidrel Horizontal Flick, which is a solid new addition, but it's not going to be that threatening if it's going to flick and then the opponent will just tank it and then kill it before it gets close to getting the second one off. Even its area of effect damage can be really limiting. When this thing is a two-shot with its horizontal flicks, that can be nice at a mid-range distance, but sometimes it just becomes a three-shot, and that's just way too weak. Getting hit by a Dynamo Roller Flick doesn't often have the same impact it used to, and that's really bad in a game where people can close the gap more easily and quickly than they could before. So many weapons got faster since Splatoon 2. There's weapon classes like Dooley's with their dodge rolls or shooters with decreased lag and startup compared to in Splatoon 1. With everything else getting more tools to close the gap, Dynamo doing less damage is just a horrible combination. However, this actually isn't the two worst parts. Let's talk about an addition to Dynamo that I completely didn't talk about when Splatoon 2 got added. The Vertical Flick. Originally, funny enough, when Vertical Flick was shown off on rollers, we didn't know what it looked like on Dynamo, and everyone was terrified about it. Remember, back then this was a top tier weapon, and now you're adding one of the longest range attacks to the game, it's gonna get the ability to poke stuff like chargers, one of its worst counters? That sounded terrifying. People were absolutely worried what Dynamo was gonna be in this game, and then Vertical Flick came out, and it's a wet noodle. Not only is this thing significantly slower than Dynamo's base flick, but its kill range is such a tiny amount more. Look at it compared to Splattershot Pro, how sad is that? And yeah, it's got long range, you can hit about Hydra, not as much as Charger, but that's still pretty solid, but it does 40 damage. This is 61 frames for the hitbox to come out. It's so long that you can literally heal in between its flicks if you're going against it. On top of that, this is a three shot kill, something that takes over three seconds to happen with a very small hitbox. Really? Dynamo Vertical Flick killing people at its maximum range is practically non-existent, and it's not threatening to chargers. If you even remotely try to Vertical Flick at a charger at that range, they are just going to kill you for it. Hell, they can even miss once or twice, and they'll probably still kill you before you end up getting them. On top of that, that ends up nerfing this weapon in this game, because being able to squid roll off a wall or squid surge puts you in the Vertical Flick attack instead of the horizontal, which sucks because the vanilla Dynamo has Tacticooler. You get access to faster versions of these movement options, but then you use them vertical flick and get shot before they can do anything. In the absolute best case, it can help with its painting range, which isn't even something Dynamo is bad at. Pretty much every roller in the game has a really good vertical flick. Swigs has a ridiculous amount of range and poking tool with its speed. Flings has paints a lot and has a high strafe speed. Carbon and regular roller are threatening kill options under ledges, and this thing just does nothing. It's a flick added with pretty much zero purpose, and it's never given its own sense of identity compared to the other ones. The real nail in the coffin, though, is we've added two new weapons that are also similar to this thing. We have the big swig roller, which, while it might not have as threatening damage, being able to consistently hit people for 35 with the flick speed swig has is actually something pretty threatening to play around, and it has one of the largest hitboxes in the entire game. On top of that, though, it has better ink efficiency, paint output, and flick speed than Dynamo Roller, painting far better than it ever could hope for. Painbrush, on the other hand, paints pretty far away, is much more threatening for mid-range damage with just how hard the flicks hit, especially with damage to objects, and has much better mobility for that speed of weapon than Dynamo does. On top of having a very threatening supportive tool with Wave Breaker to enhance those options, kind of similar to Echo Locator for Dynamo in Splatoon 1. I recently commented on this weapon, and Gray, one of the best Dynamos in Splatoon 1, literally said that this weapon feels so outdated that it's almost like they shouldn't have brought 
brought it back. And honestly, it's hard to argue with them. I don't think Dynamo is in the worst spot in the entire game, but it's definitely the absolute saddest. At least for stuff like Range Blaster, when things like 92 get added, it still has reasons to be used with things like the long range area effect. There's practically no reason to pick Dynamo, and as the game goes on, there are more and more options comparable to it that can also do the things it wants to and even used to be able to do. It sucks to see just how much this weapon has fallen from grace, and while I try to enjoy it a lot casually, it feels so weak that it's even hard to enjoy when playing it for fun. It's no secret what this weapon needs to get better. I mean, we've seen what it was like in Splatoon 1 when it was good, and it just needs to be close to that state again. There's a lot of cool things you could do with giving the vertical flick its identity, and Dynamo could be really fun, and if anything, feel more fair in this game with how much faster everything else is. On top of having probably its coolest kit yet, as Tacticaler gives it potential to be able to get back in, that fits well with the weapon now that it was buffed and gives it access to its more aggressive playstyles back when it ran Quick Respawn in Splatoon 1. But for now, it's stuck feeling completely miserable until the devs decide to remember this weapon exists. So I hope that happens soon. Thanks for watching.